I guess, Curtis Alexander, as I do more of these metabolism and food videos, I get the questions about, well, what do you eat? What does a day look like? You know, what sort of foods do you focus on? So I'll do a short video kind of going over what I eat and more importantly, the why behind it, what I'm doing. So let's hop right into it. First of all, it's important to kind of know a little bit about my background, like 30 second overview. Over the last few years, I've improved my metabolism. Now, what I mean by that is two or three years ago, I was eating anywhere from 1800 to 2200 calories a day. I'm a fairly big guy, I guess. I'm 6'1", 6'2". Right now I'm around 215 normally, but at that time I was eating not a lot of calories, slowly gaining weight, had, was diagnosed pre-diabetic thyroid problems. And this is all the while I was eating virtually zero carbs and I was intermittent fasting each day. Nowadays, by reintroducing carbs and focusing on the foods I'm going to talk about, I've been able to increase that daily amount to 2,800 to 3,500. It does depend on the time of the year. I'm able to eat more in the summer, not so much the winter. It's allowed me to also improve my life. I'm sleeping a ton better. I'm no longer on thyroid meds. I'm no longer diabetic. My fasting blood sugars actually went down after I reintroduced carbs. And that's something I can make videos on in the future if you're interested. But before we talk about what I do eat, it's really important to start out with what you should not eat that a lot of people do that's hurting their metabolism. First of all, the seed oils, you have to get those out of your diet. Seed oils are pretty much in every processed food, even in stuff that we don't consider processed, like cottage cheese, for example. So corn oil, canola oil, safflower oil, sunflower oil, all those sorts of things got to get out of your diet. And I move away from extreme diets. Trust me, I did these for a long time. They can be great in the beginning, I agree, but over time you're going to pay the price. I definitely did. So I'm not a fan of these. I don't encourage them. It's more helpful to move away from them. Okay. Now, as far as what I eat in a day, start with proteins. I shoot for 0.62 to 0.8 grams of protein per pound of ideal body weight. So in my mind, you know, I'm kind of shooting more to be around 200, 205. I'm still carrying more weight than I would like. I'm not totally focused on the weight, but as far as my protein goal, we would call that, you know, 120 to 160 grams of protein a day, which you're right, is not up to that one gram per pound of body weight. You don't need to be. The research has been pretty clear that there's not a lot of benefit going beyond that point. Yes, there is this thermic effect of food of eating more protein, but not at the result of having stomach problems, uh, which I did. So this is the sweet spot for most people. The foods I focus on, I consume a fair amount of gelatin, normally in the form of gelatin powder. I consume a fair amount of bone broth, grass-fed beef. I eat, I'm a huge fan of grass-fed beef, but I have balanced it out with other protein sources because I want to minimize my intake of phosphorus I want to keep my calcium to phosphorus ratio on point. Organ meats, for example, today, you know, I had a ounce or two of, of raw grass-fed liver. I can get into that some other time. Why I eat it that way, it's just easier for me, not that I recommend it for you. Oysters, shellfish, raw milk and cheeses, collagen, collagen also in the form of powder. So I get a wide variety of proteins, not just muscle meats, okay? Now let's talk about everybody's favorite dirty word, which is carbs. Your goal is going to vary. You have to understand that even for baseline neurological function, your brain uses probably 600 calories worth carbs a day of glucose a day. Glu carbs is the easiest way to give your brain that glucose. Otherwise, your body's going to kick out stress hormones if you're low carb to make that glucose. So it's just easier to get the carbs. So that gives you a minimum of 150 grams of carbs a day, just for basic neurological functioning. And you can go up from there based off how you're doing. This is going to depend on the environment you're coming from. If you came from an extreme environment, diet environment, like I did, you're going to have to get to this amount and higher, much, much slower. I have videos talking about that if you want to go check them out. But I focus on ripe fruits and juices, especially in the beginning. These are easier on your digestive tract easier to assimilate, easier on your blood sugars, straight up sugar. You know, I know that's a dirty word too, but I'll put sugar in my coffee with collagen and raw milk. 
on some mornings. So I'm not afraid of it. I don't get carried away with it. There's better choices. Honey, probably one of them. Raw maple syrup, well-cooked roots. Okay, potatoes of all types. What I mean is these are totally doable, but it's going to depend on the person. Not everybody can tolerate them that well, especially in the beginning. That's why I put an asterisk next to it. I would tread a little lightly with adding potatoes in. Same with jasmine and basmati rice. I do fine with it in moderation now, but in the beginning, that was not the case. But the bottom line is carbs are a great food. They're great for energy. They're great for hormone production. People will say, well, you don't need carbs. Well, okay, you don't have to have them, but if you don't give your body carbs, your body will kick out stress hormones to make glucose. So yes, you can survive, but you're not going to thrive by not having some carbs and life is just better. My health has improved immensely adding carbs back in. Sourdough, I forgot that. So I make my own sourdough. I don't need a ton of it, but again, it's there now that I've kind of stabilized a little bit. I can have some of these things, but in the beginning, I'd stick with the top four. Okay. Talk a bit about fats. This one's a little more simple. It's going to kind of vary depending on how many, how much protein and how many carbs you're eating, but Generally, you're going to fall in that 20 to 40% range. I wouldn't go any lower than that. I would definitely not go any higher than that. But in the beginning, like if you're coming from keto, you may have to go 40% or higher until your body gets used to carbs. Then you can bring it down. Okay. I focus on grass-fed butter, ghee, not always ghee. I like to cook in it at high temperatures more than butter, but coconut oil, I've been to add more in. I really like coconut oil. So the fats are very simple. That's what I would include. I would avoid all other fats. Yes, avocado oil, olive oil, seed oils. I don't use them. Olive oil is kind of the middle of the road. You can get away with it. The other stuff I just stay away from. Okay. This isn't about having the perfect diet. People hear this and they're like, okay, this is, this is what I have to eat and I have to be perfect. And that's not what this is about. It's about giving yourself a mix of natural foods, find a macro ratio that works for you. I'm going to make another video on how to find a macro ratio that works for you, meaning how many protein, how many carb, how many fat work for you and how to find that number. So just focus on big ticket items. Number one, avoid processed foods and seed oils. Focus on that 80, 20 rule. Yes. I go out to eat. Yes. I cheat sometimes and have potato chips. It happens. Don't get neurotic about it. Okay. Get a wide variety of natural proteins. It is very important. Protein is one of those things you need to get enough, but you don't need too much. Stop being afraid of carbs. You know, I've talked about this a lot on this channel. There's just this pervading belief that carbs cause insulin resistance and they cause diabetes. And that's actually not true. It's been, it's been shown in, in numerous studies to not be the case. It was, it was not true with me. I was diagnosed as pre-diabetic eating 30 grams of carbs a day and fasting. Okay. So people have this misconception about carbs. Okay. And you have to get your head around that. Add in some natural fats, your ratio. Okay. Your macro ratio is likely going to be different than mine. It's not good or bad. It's, it's indifferent. You know, it's just, everybody's different. It's best to eat all three, but your ratio, you're going to have to experiment. You're going to have to accept the fact. This isn't going to be something you do and it works right away and everything's perfect. You're going to have to experiment and keep trying stuff. But if you focus on the foods that I listed earlier and just experiment with them as you go along, if not get a coach to help you, sometimes that can be really beneficial. So uh, this has already gone long enough. You guys want to, I want to end it here. Just let me know in the comments, other topics that would be helpful for me to cover. I will get those out. And I hope this helped. So I will see you in the next one.